Next Thursdays. So glad to see so many people here today. Happy New Year. Uh, welcome. You're at First Thursdays with Sustainable Tulsa, and we're so happy to see so many beautiful faces here today, and some new and uh, some very old, like Michael Patton here. No, just, I'm sorry, I had to start. I had to start. Uh, uh, old, like, good friends. So, anyway, uh, but thank you so much for being here, and just a few quick updates, and then we'll get going. Uh, I love seeing so many people wanting to start the year out right with uh, a sustainable sustainable uh, resolution or revolution, one or the other. Um, so, okay, uh, quick updates. Thank you to uh, PSO as a lead sponsor for Thursdays, and also want to give thanks to Kavanta, Matt Newman with Kavanta, uh, TCC Creativity Center, and McCann Law, uh, Mike McCann here, right here. So uh, uh, have all of our sponsors wave, and let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, also want to give a shout out and thank you to my board members that are here today, Matt Newman, Mike Lemus, Tracy Poe, Carrie Rowland, and uh, one of our other board members that has been with us, it feels like forever, um, is Joanne Ferguson. Give a wave back there, Joanne. She's just left, but she's with us here today. So let's give them all a thank, thank you for their leadership. Um, many of you already know uh, via email or social media, um, but we have some sad and good news that Sabrina Bevins, we want to thank her for her service, uh, but she's stepping away and, and she's going to focus on a healthy pregnancy as she and Will prepare for their first child. So let's give her a thank you for all her service. We're going to miss her, but we appreciate all the work that she has contributed to making First Thursdays a better program this uh, last year. So thank you so much, Sabrina. Uh, but due to that, we do have an opening, and uh, we did post that out on, um, uh, it's on our website, and we sent out an email. So if you're interested, or if you know somebody that'd be a great fit for this position, uh, please take a look. Um, we're asking to receive all those applications by January 22nd. Um, also want to just give an update about one of our programs, which is Scorecard. Uh, Scorecard is our triple bottom line strategy program, and many, raise your hand if you're a Scorecard member or a coach. So, woo, oh, let's give, they're working hard, so let's give them a round of applause. Um, <laughs> What they're, they're uh, either with some type of business, nonprofit, or any entity that uh, has manages people in space, and uh, they are working towards a triple bottom line for their businesses. And so, if you're interested in becoming a coach, we do have a training coming up. Uh, uh, find myself and Mike Lemus, where you Mike, give a wave there, Mike. I don't see you. Are you maybe he left the room. Anyway, Mike Lemus, um, uh, he is a, oh, there he is, okay, <laughs> over there. Um, and reach out to us if you're interested in being a coach. And then also, if you're already a scorecard member or wanting to be a scorecard member, we have a program coming up on the 26th of January, and this is our scorecard work day. And it's going to be such a great day. It's going to be over at the library. I call it the 70s room, but I think it's the Pocahontas room. But it is, if you haven't been in that room, it's fabulous. But we're going to be, uh, we're going to have coaches, and we're going to be looking at all aspects of the scorecard. It's a great way to get a start on your scorecard program or, um, and get with, and network with other scorecard members. So I encourage encourage you to participate in that. I uh, want to give a thank to Rob with Chimera for bringing uh, over the lunches and also offering coffee again. And if you want lunch next time, make sure you pre-order. We're glad to have it ready here for you. And um, we're also now offering composting uh, for all of 2018. Give away from Full Sun Composting over there. Oh, okay, we got to applaud too. Woo. Um, so we're going to compost. So at the end, uh, make sure you compost whatever you have left from lunch, and we appreciate Full Sun com uh, Composting uh, helping us with that. And make sure you uh, visit the booths. We'll, leave, we'll end a little early so you have a chance. And one last announcement, we have listening sessions that we have started to do. And uh, Cindy, are you still back there at the table there? So Cindy is helping to lead these listening sessions where if you're interested in a deeper conversation around sustainability and the issue that we're having today, 
Cindy Shanks is helping to lead that. So make sure that uh, you find her for First Thursdays and, and be a part of that conversation. And I just want to say a word about um, New Year's resolutions. I love them. I, I always ask my friends, what is yours this year? I mean, it's my favorite uh, thing to have a conversation around at the end of the year. What is the plan for next year? And um, I, I just think it's a good chance to, to look back and reflect and think about what that next thing you can do. And, and I do want to encourage, I know Michael's going to have thousands of wonderful, funny, and insightful ideas for us. Uh, but I just encourage you, you know, pick... Pick the thing that you can continue on, and it doesn't have to be these big grand leaps. There's so much that we can do, but pick the one that you can maintain for a year and continue on the next year and make it a part of your life. And uh, so anyway, I hope that you're finding those out today, and I want to say this is your network to support you on that. So we're going to take two minutes. I'm going to create a little chaos here. You're going to get up and you're going to introduce yourself to someone you've never met. And, um, and uh, if you're a seasoned First Thursday person, find somebody that is not and welcome them here today. But I want to make sure everybody's meeting somebody new today. So two minutes, go, and then we're going to start with Michael. All right, introduce yourselves. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, great job. You did an excellent job. Okay, we're gonna stop the chaos. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna introduce Michael Patton. <laughs> you guys are really good at this. <laughs> uh, I know it was a risk to do it at the beginning, but I had to do it anyway. Uh, I know, okay. Okay, I want to introduce Michael Patton to you. We will definitely allow you to continue this networking at the end. Um, <laughs> thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this program, of course, is about New Year's resolutions. A happy New Year. We've got Michael Patton is our uh, speaker today. And probably many of you know him, but if not, Michael is a lifelong Tulsan who has worked in the environmental issues for most of his life. And I think he got started on soap was the first topic. Maybe he'll share that with us. Uh, he currently works at Land Legacy. Uh, it's the only statewide land conservation group. Uh, uh, working on the types of issues that they're working on, and he spends a lot of his time volunteering with nonprofits, ranging from growing up up with trees uh, to the gardens 
Center. And uh, I, I want to say just personally, I've known Michael for, it feels like forever, and Michael took a risk to hire me. He was my first environmentally focused boss, and um, I appreciate that opportunity. And he decided that he'd let us all go to the first sustainability conference in Oklahoma City and um, had an opportunity, and that's when I asked, hey, let's get a Tulsa group going. And so it was really out of that moment uh, that we that I was able to start Sustainable Tulsa. So, Michael, thank you. Um, I consider you a wonderful friend, and we're lucky to have you here today. Let's welcome Michael Patton. I'm get it. Yep. Thank you, Corey, and thanks TCC, and thanks this crowd, and, 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 and congratulations, Sabrina, so that's really awesome. Um, so I am pleased to be here. Um, this is a very nice opportunity to talk about resolutions, and I'm not a real serious person, as you might surmise um, from this, so it's hard to get people to agree with me, uh, unless you've been drinking. So people agree with me, so this is a much better speech at happy hour than it is now. <laughs> So in general, you know what resolutions are. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And I hope from this speech, you'll just have some ideas and you'll want to do and become a better person in 2018. And you'll find something here that you want to do and agree with. And I'll just babble for a while. So um, I'll save some time for questions. I can't imagine there'd be any questions about this. So in general terms, resolutions, we know what the normal ones are, that we're going to exercise more. We're going to go to the gym every day. I go to the John every day. So I, I don't know if Jim and John know each other, but I feel like I'm trying. Um, people think they're going to run marathons. They make the resolution that they're going to run 26.2 miles. I, does anybody in this room run marathons? Raise your hand. So stop it. So you don't, <laughs> you don't have to do it anymore. So the story of marathon, this guy ran from the, a battle and to, from basically to Athens to talk about the Athenian victory over the Persians. He ran and died at the end. So now we celebrate that? I mean, he, he, was, he was announcing the victory. Okay, we have Facebook now. We, have to, we can text the victory message. So you don't have to do it anymore. So move forward. Um, and also it's about not doing things. A promise to not, to not. I promise or I vow or I, I try to resolve to not butt dial people this year. So I'm on my phone. So a problem we never had before. My father didn't butt dial with a rotary phone. So with my phone, however, you can lean on it and, and call people. And I have to accept things. A resolution can be simply that, the acceptance of something. I accept that no matter what I do in my life, I'll never be as famous as our Kardashian ever. So I have to accept that and move forward from there. These are the definitions of resolutions. It's a firm decision to do or not do something. It's an opinion. I have an opinion. I'm going to try to do this. Or it could be from a legislative body. We have elected officials in this room, so that, that's officially what it is. It's a resolution of what we want to be as a community. Or it can be a resolution of an it can be action to solve a dispute, to solve, to mediate something from there. So here's some synonyms. And by the way, the Golden Driller, my, my favorite of all. So I really love the Golden Driller. Um, he's everything Tulsa. So he's easy to understand. He's not going anywhere. And uh, he's staring at Texas all the time. So he's just glaring at them. So I think that's interesting. So, um, but look at these resolutions. I mean, this is it. It's intent. It's purposefulness. It's relentlessness. That's what this is. That's what you make a resolution. I'm going to be this relentless person on this topic. It's a promise to me on these matters. I, I like that the Wikipedia had pluck as a resolution synonym. So pluck, that's a word we don't use often enough. I'm going to use it a lot in 2018. My first resolution to work pluck into conversations. So to go forward from there. Um, boldness, spirit, all these things are what resolutions really are. That's what they really say. My definition of resolution, I promise to myself to try to be better, to make a better world. It's a declaration at this moment in 2018 of where I am and where I want to be in 2018. It's a list. I make lists of my intent, my choices, my wishes. I love this picture here of TU. So I think football is a wonderful gathering place. People may look down on football or think it's wonderful and probably is overblown in some of our schools. Not at TU. At TU, these guys aren't going to be pros, and people aren't gambling fortunes on them. I like that TU has such a place in our communities. I like that football. Uh, my kids played high school football, and 
that was my gathering place. That's where me and the parents gathered. So football can be my wish. I wish that we have a good football season, of course, but more importantly, I hope that football, we're all safe in these kind of things, my resolution. My intent is to enjoy it and appreciate what it brings to our community. We're an academic place. This is a college, so I thought we'd go through the definition of sustainability. It's derived from Latin. It means maintain, support, or endure. Endure, a word we really don't talk about much. Do I have the personal fortitude to endure this in my life in 2018, to put up with all these kind of things, to get through this in my life? My 2018 wish can be simply that, to endure. Sustainability says that. We want a world that endures, that gets through this. It's a very simple definition. We all have our own by making a better world, not using those resources. I think I want more than that. I don't want maintain and support and endure. I think my resolution should be more loftier than that. They should be mindful of what I think and how I act. They should be a stubbornness, and I'm not going to do these things. My resolutions should be more than sustainability. They should be totally improvement, not just keep the same and make sure that there are the same resources for my generations beyond me, but to make a much better world for them. It requires effort. It's not simply sustainability to keep it there. I require effort for me. My 2018 resolutions should say that. I have effort in this. I want to do this because this matters. Feel that strong about them. Suggested resolutions. Um, again, I like this big picture, so it's one of my favorites here. Um, so I think that in general terms, I'm going to give you some simple ideas, and then we'll end up with some generic ideas, and hopefully you'll find something that you can relate to and such. I like this picture of the river. I like this picture of Tulsa, what it shows, um, what a beautiful wide river we have. And one of my resolutions is to work on this river and protect this river. So Land Legacy has a sandbar at 121st Street or so that we're going to protect. And I, I see Mike from Nature Conservancy here. His job is to protect land as well in the community. And so one of my resolutions, and I hope you'll join um, Nature Conservancy and Land Legacy and others, is to find ways to preserve the land we have, especially near the river, especially in green space in Oklahoma. So I love living in a city with skyscrapers, and I love living in a city with a natural river at the same time. My resolutions can keep both. I can find ways to do both of them. Here's my first. I see Tulsa Transit in the back of the room. Yay, Tulsa Transit. We have 21 routes, 63 buses, two transit centers. It's a $20 million operation for us. It's a big deal. We spend a lot of public dollars to do to ride buses, and yet we don't ride them. So maybe this room rides it more than most, but we don't. I mean, 10,000 riders a day, that's one out of 800 Tulsans rides this bus. So it requires subsidy. So it's a $20 million operation with $16 million from, from tax dollars, seven million from city and eight from the feds and one from the state. So four out of five dollars goes to support this bus system. As a family of four, my city dollars are five dollars a month. That's the best five dollars I spend. That my community, even if I don't ride a bus, my community has this. My resolution is get my five dollars worth. So my first resolution is ride the bus sometime. Find one time in 2018 you can ride a city bus somewhere. So ride it back and forth. I rode in 2017, because I worked with Tulsa Transit some, we rode from the downtown station to the Memorial Station and back. It was a nice ride. So Nancy was on that bus with me in the back of the room. So ride a bus once in 2018. So get your money's worth out of there. Buses in Tulsa, Oklahoma are an underused asset. Before this meeting started, we talked about transportation and can we live our life around transit-oriented development and can it make a difference? And we all think of trains and we all think of Uber as the future. I don't know what the future is. I know what 2018 is. We have buses. Ride a bus, get people off the car, find a way to do it, enjoy them. So find friends to sing along on the bus. Find a way to go forward. This is my next one. It's about styrofoam. This is a river in the Philippines. It's not here locally in Tulsa, unless my slides are Tulsa. A piece of styrofoam the size of a dime will kill a bird or a fish. I'm amazed how much styrofoam I have in my life. I can't get away from it. My 2018 resolution is to have less styrofoam, to find ways to avoid styrofoam polystyrene. It's impossible to recycle. It's very difficult to begin with. What's it mean to ban styrofoam from my life? It means I can't have quick trip so cups anymore. I can't have Sonic. Sonic's all styrofoam. They won't bring it to your own cup. I can't have to-go container from restaurants. I don't know if I can do it in 2018, but I can strive to. My resolution in 2018 is to make less of this. 
I mean, styrofoam is a wonderful product. It makes hot things hot and it keeps cold things cold. How does it know? I have no idea, but it works very, very well. It is, it's the devil. It really is. I hate to say this, and it is, it's truly everything wrong with our society. It's the example of the single use disposable world. So if anything, I can't get most people to stop styrofoam, but maybe I can stop you from taking it outdoors. Keep it indoors. It won't kill birds and fish indoors, but you can do better than this. So you can have a ways that you, all the employees don't have to have styrofoam cups. They don't need them for their water. There are different ways to do things. So try to avoid styrofoam. So it's just, it's a single use. It's like a, it's like a surface park in all across the street here. It's used for one thing. I want my life in 2018 to be multi-use, everything to have different values and go forward. Here's my next one. 20% of Americans will shop at a thrift store. So my wife is in the audience. So she's taught me this well. So I am the cheapest person you've ever met. And I married cheaper. So it's, it's awesome. <laughs> so we love this. This tie and these shoes came from thrift stores in Tulsa. I love them. I, so I married up. You're right, quite right, quite right. So, but I just have lived a life of not buying things. I mean, trying to find. If I do, can I buy something used? I know it's stupid, but there are some great thrift stores in Tulsa, not only to buy from, but to support. We have thrift stores in Tulsa that for every cause you ever heard of, for Animal Aid and, and Salvation Army and the Howe Foundation, and of course, Goodwill, a major player, um, Habitat for Humanity, ministries and education groups of all types, nonprofits that we want to support. And we think, how do I support them? Oh, I write them a check at Christmas time. No, go to the thrift store and buy something. You can do this. It's, it's so simple to look at used items as not less in value, but potentially more in value, and of course, cheaper. So I'm so cheap, this is a true story. I went to Vegas one time and they charge you extra for luggage. So I wore two shirts and I went to, and I went to a thrift store in Vegas and bought clothes and at the end of the trip, donated them back to the same thrift store and went back and came home to Tulsa. Sorry, so I, I, it was so fun. I, I, I was already winning. I was in Vegas and I was winning to begin with because so I, I beat luggage fees and the stuff. But you can, thrift stores are great for this awesome concept of sustainability. I mean, they create jobs, they lower waste, they do all these kind of things. There's a life cycle of goods. One of those, I think, you think that clothing maybe has a worn spot or something. Most things don't. Most things do not. A mirror at a thrift stop, a thrift store, has probably been, children have brushed their hair in that mirror for years and generations before and will for generations to come. That mirror is more valuable than I found it in a thrift store than it is I'd ever find it at a, a Walmart or a, or a Target store. So find a way to do that in 2018. 60 million cars. I'm just amazed. I, we had a conversation earlier about cars. Uh, America's number three in cars per person. We have four cars for five people. So we're number three. Uh, number one and number two, um, there's a, company, uh, a country called San Marino in Europe, a very small, 38,000 people with six cars for every five people. That's like 40,000 cars. We have more cars than that on Memorial and Levin Street for sale than they have as a country, so it doesn't really count. And this, number two is uh, Monaco, the country of Monaco. So again, they have about six cars for every five people. I mean, that's where Prince Harry's from. They have a Grand Prix, cars are a big part of the economy, but we're number three. We're dramatically more. So let's take care of that good. Let's take care of that car. So in 2018, I'm going to make sure I take care of that possession I have, that humongous 4,000 pound thing in my driveway. I'm going to take care of it. 4,000 pounds. I mean, Graham is here talking about recycling. 4,000 pounds is more than all the plastic bottles and aluminum cans and, and stuff you'll have in your life, in your, your whole year, in your trash can. I mean, it's equivalent to. 4,000 pounds is what is, is like if you drink a 12 pack of beer for 28 years, that's that much weight. So, you're recycling. It's all in my driveway. So, why would I not take care of it and make sure I keep it as long as possible? And hopefully, replace it by not getting another one, by going to Uber someday. I have big faith in 2018 that we're going to have driverless cars even come to Tulsa. We're going to have cars come here and we're going to accept Uber as an idea, and the three car family will become the two car family. And then we'll become an area that doesn't need to widen roads and ride the buses because we have options and go forward from that. So I hope that all happens. I hope it happens. Mentor. I'm very proud that I've had times in my life where I had the freedom to be a mentor. Um, I think mentoring is one of the most positive things you can do in the community. Um, one of the things I did, uh, Kathy Taylor, when she was mayor, convinced me to mentor in schools, so I taught chess. 
I, um, Chad Burton's son was one of my chess students. I'm proud to say his son was also the champion, Tulsa Public Schools Elementary School champion as chess player. Um, so he beat all the other, all these different kids and he whipped them all. And chess was really fun for me to teach as a mentor. Uh, my favorite day in chess was this day where I'd take all the kids, there would be 30 or 40 kids, and I'd set up three boards with no pieces and I'd give some kids random pieces and tell them to set on the board as I turned my back. And as a mentor, I wasn't teaching chess. I was trying to interact with these kids. I was trying to accept them and coach them and all these kind of things. It had nothing to do with chess because chess is a very tough game and you've got to be really good and it teaches focus and all these things. But on that day, I would take the class and we'd look at the board and these kids would set up the random black pieces here and the white pieces here. And we'd go through the room and we'd say, okay, what do you do? You're the black pieces. You're way behind. What's your strategy? It doesn't matter that if the queen took 20 moves to get there, she's there. What are you gonna do? You walked into a situation where you have to make a decision. So I love that. That mentoring to me was teaching these kids to make decisions. You're way ahead, you're way behind, let's do something. That's what it does. They do all these things, personal support, counseling, acceptance of who you are and what you wanna do as a community. 2018, we all should mentor. This is an ad that I ran in Urban Tulsa when I was director at the Met, and back in 1996, I think it says here. Um, so this is a, um, my mom loves this ad, for the, by the way. So, you know, mom was right, clean your plate, you know. And uh, it is so true. 30% of the food we buy, and Americans buy, is thrown away. The, the world average is 10%. I'm so proud that they do composting here, that we find ways to, even that extra food, it's not a matter of cleaning your plate. I mean, it's just, it is that, but it is more that stop throwing away food. There's ways to use leftovers to make soup. If you have an extra bananas and they've gone bad, make banana bread. My wife makes wonderful banana bread with our leftover bananas. If you don't need the large pizza, order the medium pizza. We can do this. There are times when it's difficult. Our children, for example, young children, we, we end up throwing away, as you know, if you have parents of young children, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, more than this. I mean, you may throw away almost all the food they have. It is very difficult to do. Of course, you can compost it. But we don't have to throw away food. We can do a better job than this. I think, um, I got in trouble for this ad, not for my boss or anybody else there, but this lady got in my face when I ran this ad, because she said that this is why we have obesity, because this is the reason we have obesity, because we've taught our kids, I was like, the reason? I mean, the only one? I mean, there's not genetics involved in this, you know, or, or simple carbs or inactivity and stuff? No, it was this one thing. So I was kind of depressed about it. I mean, she really got in my face over it. And I thought, oh, I ran this ad, that's kind of a silly ad and stuff. And so that depression led me to eat and I gained like 150 pounds. And uh, true story, and uh, not from this scenario, but um, so I decided maybe instead of the, trying to push the message of clean your plate, I'll do this resolution, use smaller plates. So <laughs> much easier idea. So much easier idea to, to reduce the amount of waste there. So um, of course, with a smaller plate, I can stack higher. I mean, I have a minimal understanding of architecture. I can move forward and do that. I love this quote. Um, my resolution for 2018 is to plant something. Just plant something. I don't care what it is. I mean, it can be a tree with upper trees. I mean, it's a wonderful organization, and trees obviously bring incredible things to our lives. I mean, trees breathe in what we breathe out, and vice versa. They're the antidote to human existence. But all plants, everything, it's amazingly simple to plant something. You can find some spot. I don't care if you live in an apartment. You have a pot. You can put it somewhere in the window. But I believe outdoors, when you plant something, it changes you. When you feel that warmth of the earth, you're a different person. When you make a garden, you see gardens differently. You see flowers differently. You have invested this, this hope into that plant. Amazingly good for you. Amazingly good transference of all these things in your life. I mean, I, hope is a difficult concept sometimes. I, I often think that Obama was wrong. We should give up hope. There is no hope. But no, our plants do that. These baby trees, up trees do, are more impressive to me than the, the all tall trees that have been in my neighborhood for a long time, than that 65-foot oak in my front yard, because those trees are hope. So I think plant something. I think you can do that. Plant something for many reasons. I mean, it can be salads. It can be um, shade. It could be beauty in your lives. It could be for butterflies or bees. It could be to hide from your neighbors. It could be a million reasons why. Um, so I'm, I'm proud that I'm on the Tulsa Garden Center board and, and that we work on this issue. And, and many of you I've seen work on trees and stuff. We near our flower beds to try to help as a non-profit spirit of making those gardens for the public. I really appreciate that. So. 
This is a resolution that I think we do pretty well in this crowd, and Corey makes us do that, introduce yourself to new people. So um, I really love this. I mean, this is the only way, if you're here for business reasons, you're going to grow your network. You're not going to do it because you have a booth here, because they saw you as a sponsor. It's because they know you. So it's that relationship, how you made them feel, how you made them interested in doing business with you. To grow your network personally and professionally, you have to introduce yourself. You have to have business cards in your pocket and throw them out as fast as you can and talk to people. In 2018, make a resolution to introduce yourself to everyone you can. It can be everyone in your life, but start with your neighbors. Start with people around you. Start with other people besides your coworkers, other people on other floors in your building, everyone you can. This is how we make a more sustainable 2018. We have better relationships. We have better understanding and acceptance of all these things because we've introduced ourselves to them. We took the initiative, that opportunity to have a risk. I put my hand out there whether they took it or not. In 2018, introduce yourself to new people. So I have a lot of friends, um, so I'm very blessed to have that. They're probably all imaginary friends like Facebook friends are and stuff. But, um, so, um, but new friends allow me to tell the same old jokes to new audiences. I mean, they're a good reason to have friends for these kind of things. Um, I found a quote. I was trying to look for inspirational quotes. Um, it's not one of my slides here, but whenever you have anything in life, you can look it up. If you want to have gardening, look up gardening quotes on the Google, and you'll find a tremendous number of ideas um, and quotes. So I found this one. This Aeneas Nin is her name. She was a, um, a writer in the 60s and 70s. Um, turns out she wrote sexual erotica. Uh, I didn't know all this. Feminist movement type of work in the 60s and 70s and was a speaker. But she said that each friend represents a new world to us, a world that was not born until they arrive. So and I like that. I like that I make worlds with my relationships, that we move forward for that. This is one that I'm trying to take clarity to my wife and to my kids as much as anything else. In 2018, I'm going to look at my phone less. And I'm not going to look at my phone outdoors unless I have to check something. Indoors is different. In this room, at the restaurant, at, in my bedroom, um, at my kitchen table, that's different. I mean, I try not to look at the phones. We all know we look too much at it. I, my length this year will probably be to put my phone down and get off these kind of things. But the, themselves, we are missing a beautiful world. We are missing a beautiful sky. So I'm blessed in my job to travel the state of Oklahoma and see the beauty around and see the hills and the trees and the mountains and the creeks and the rivers and all this kind of stuff to see. And I'm pleased that I have to drive because as driving, I can't look at my phone. I'm the driver. I have to pay attention. I can't look at my phone. Everyone else in my car right, it looks at their phone. Everybody else all the time looks at their phone. I want to get cruise, I think, just so I can not look at my phone and, and still move in this direction. But more importantly, we have a beautiful sky. We have a tremendous sky. This year, the cold, beautiful time that's right now it is, find a way to get outside the city lights, the light pollution, and look up at the stars and see stars. Take your loved ones out. Take those grandkids, kids, wherever you can, and look at the stars at night. During the day, I mean, make a point to find sunsets. Make a point to find sunrises, whatever it is in your life, and stare at those for a while, not at your phone. That phone's not going to change you. That phone may inform you. It may entertain you. It's not going to change you in the way the sky will. So look at the sky. This is one of mine to make less printed pages. I'm amazed how much I print. So you may not have this affliction that I have. I work in an office where we have files. Uh, we are, we've made papers. It is true that we won't look at much of these. We have to have them. We have all kinds of monitoring you have to do. So I know people who print out their emails. They print out everything in their lives. So um, I, I don't know a recent stat, but I saw in 2010 that an average high school student in America kills two trees with just homework paper he has to turn in, paper given to him or he has to bring back, not the textbooks, two, two trees for high school. I'm sure it's less. My high, kids in high school had to do papers electronically and some emails and stuff, but we can do better. Do I really need this? I mean, this presentation is on two pieces of paper. I print front and back at least. I can use the back of my paper for my scratch pads. I can find ways to not print. In 2018, it, do I have to have a printed copy of this? Do I really need it? What am I going to do with it? I'm really going to look at this. If I do, I have to have a notebook and I have to have a file cabinet. I have to take care of all these things. There are things we have to. In 2018, I'm going to decide which of those things I have to print, which aren't. I like this one. I particularly like this slide. I like this girl with the funny hair in the middle. So I was that kid too, probably with funny hair. So I have very little skills in life. I have good hair. My wife gave our kids the rest of it. And um, so I also like this kid showing his elbow. I like that. I have an elbow. I have an arm. Um, and moving forward. So um, there is nothing more sustainable than public schools. There is nothing more sustainable than our effort and our interest and our monies 
and our time into Tulsa Public Schools. There's nothing that fits the definition of sustainability more than public schools, not private schools, public schools. And we want it as a society. It comes from that. There's nothing more. I, I'm embarrassed I live in a state where the overall tax burden is 47th. Overall, 47th most taxed, least tax state, I guess. So it shows. It shows in my schools. It shows in my society. This year in 2018, when I talk to a legislator or someone running for office, especially for the state legislature, I don't want to talk about what they're going to do. I want to talk about one thing. How are they going to raise revenue? Tell me raise revenue. Tax me more. I want to be taxed more to live in a better state, in a better community. Do it. I'm 47th. My president has lowered my federal taxes. Raise my state taxes comparatively and fix this problem. There's nothing more important than that. We need to make sure we do that. Composting. I love to compost, yay, composters. <laughs> so I'm a dirt farmer, yay. So I'm so excited about this. I'm, I, I tell you the joke, I'm so excited about compost and I soiled myself. So <laughs> terrible joke. <coughs> Leaves and grass are thrown away by people in this room. 600 to 1,000 pounds of leaves and grass per person, per, per home in America are thrown away for no reason, for no reason. In 2018, stop throwing away leaves and grass. So they're not good to burn. They have some nitrogen. He doesn't want them. He'd rather have stuff that has higher BTU value than a bunch of wet grass in your leaves anyway. They're so easy. It's a magic trick. So the Met has a wonderful brochure on their website about how to do this. There are master gardeners in this room that can help you do that. Stop throwing me leaves and grass. I'm not, you don't have to be the greatest composter. You don't have to put all their stuff together. And, and, but it's amazing. It's a magic trick. It just happens. I have this oven in my backyard. I have an oven where I have a compost bin. My mother, I built her a compost bin, and she was so proud that she got free dirt from it. Why buy dirt from a bag when you can get it there? So you can compost. I think it's important that we try to find simple things that each of us can do. And leaves and grass are something that has so much impact. It's more than all the recyclables that go into that bin for most people. So the leaves and grass from their lawn. So they are a gift from God for you. And they should stay in your yard. You should never want them to ever leave. They should stay here. We need to make our lands more fertile. What better way than to add compost to them, to the very land? Run your mower like we do over the front yard and the backyard of the leaves and leave them right there. So golf courses do. Your yard can look like a golf course if you simply compost and mulch and not throw away leaves and grass. In 2018, it's one of the most simplest, most important things you can do. Make a pile of leaves and grass so not throw them away. Before I end, I want to say there's some other popular resolutions here. I mean, um, so I think each of us can find something on this list um, that I think is nice. I mentioned make soup from leftovers. Uh, call your family more. I think my mother made me say that one. Um, practice gratitude. Um, be in the arts. I mean, these are simple. Just be mindful. So I ask you to make resolutions in your life to make a better world, not just simply a sustainable world, but a better world. Can I do these efforts? Am I doing these already? Am I giving back? Am I serving back in my community as best I can do? I have more. These are the ones hard for me, except change is very difficult for me. I'm very old and stubborn. And I accept change if I can't make the change in bills, like in large denominations, that's the change I want. Um, Learn patience. I'm not patience. I, I know that's my resolution. I know I need to do this. I know I need to do a better job. Conquer fear. All these things. Take nature pictures. Mike does such a wonderful job on his Facebook page of these wonderful nature pictures, how important it is. Keep better at keeping in touch. I really like that one. So the people in my life, I know who they are. I have a Facebook list of them. I have ways my phone of the contacts. But I know they're there. They're on my Facebook. They're on my phone. Am I really keeping in touch? In 2018, keep better touch. I'll end with these, I, there's three last things here, and this is a picture of Woodward Park, one of my most beautiful places in Tulsa. So, in your own mind, say this now. I'm really gonna try to blank, to do something. And this is something I really feel strongly. In your own mind, quietly think, what will you do? This is a promise to you, not to me, not to anybody else in this room, not to your family, not to anyone else, but I am gonna try to do this thing. I'm not gonna do something. There's something you're not going to do. There's something you know is bad for you, bad for society. You know you shouldn't do this. You've been doing it. I'll be a better world. I'm not going to engage in tweet wars with people because you know you do that now or something. There's got to be something in your life that you feel like, 
I, I, I argue on Facebook. I like Facebook too much. I, I think people have different levels of caffeination. They always worry about sleeping and they're always, and, and, or Facebook, they're always on it too much or, or too little. So I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna find something I have too much of and I'm gonna find it, I'm gonna try to have less of it in my life. In 2018, I hereby resolve. So along with this last slide, this is a, this is a pond in Tulsa, um, Braden Pond. So Corey and I both had homes near here. Um, so our, my wife and I, are, our son's named after this place. He's named Braden after this park in Tulsa where I grew up. And um, I use this as a memory of where I am and what parks mean to us. I resolve to what? To yourself right now, what is the thing you say I resolve to do? So that's the important thing. It's not for me. It's not for this room. It's for you, a better you and a better tomorrow and a better world. Here's my contact information. So I hereby resolve to be a better person next time I see you. So thank you all very much. Thank you. <laughs> Let's thank Michael one more time. Is he? <laughs> Michael has definitely inspired me over the years, and he's made me laugh at myself and, and our movement, too. Uh, so I appreciate what you offer, and you gave so many wonderful ideas. So, uh, and remember, this is the room that can be helpful to you as you're on this journey. And come back every first Thursday and, and uh, keep visiting with the people around you. I guarantee you, everybody at the booths and in the seats at the tables is an expert in something. And um, there is an opportunity to hear. So, um, Michael, thank you so much. And I, I, before we end, I want to uh, pass the mic around to all the booths. 30 seconds. Tell us why you should be on our list for our, uh, what we resolve this year. So, uh, 30 seconds. Let us know. Hello, everyone. My name is Ren Barger. I'm the founder and CEO at Tulsa Hub. We are Tulsa's community bicycle workshop. One word I did not hear Michael mention in his list of resolutions. Um, <laughs> a bicycle is not only a great way to get outside, to get more exercise, to meet new friends, to try new things, but it's also a uh, form of transportation. It's a transportation choice. And for people who do not have a driver's license or cannot afford to operate or maintain a, even a used car, a bicycle can mean the difference between their independence, being able to keep a job, being able to uh, take better care of themselves and engage in our community. So we are at 3rd and Guthrie downtown just behind the BOK Center. We're open to the public 20 hours a week. We are we have the distinguished honor of being the Henry Bellman Sustainability Triple Bottom Line Award winner. You can find out more about us on Facebook, our website, tulsahub.org. We're also about to be the operator of Tulsa's first public bike share system. So in the downtown corridor, in uh, Cherry Street, Street and Brookside and a gathering place, bicycles will be available to you as a transportation choice. So if you'd like to learn more about us, I will be here all afternoon and definitely um, look forward to seeing many of you with the Sustainable Tulsa community moving forward into the year. Hi, I'm Stacy from the Public Library. Um, of course, the Public Library is here to be a resource to you for any of your rev resolutions that you may make, whether it's um, diet, fitness, gardening, personal finance, relationships, all kinds of things. Um, if your resolution is to learn something new, you can learn Russian or Cherokee. Um, you can learn how to make candles. You can um, take business classes through some of our online platforms, and I have a lot more information about those if you're interested. Thank you. Okay, I'm Graham Brannon. I'm the director of the Met, Metropolitan Environmental Trust. And uh, why the Met? I would say because everybody wants to learn more. That's a great resolution. So learn more of what you can do uh, to improve the environment you live in. So um, I always say call us because I've got great staff that can answer any question about recycling especially, but the staff is way smarter than me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so give us a call and uh, look on our website and just learn something that you might want to do this year. Hi, my name is JC Myers and I'm with the Tulsa Regional STEM Alliance. So we do science, technology, engineering, and math education around the region. 
Um, so we partner with businesses, organizations, individuals to help improve STEM education for our students so that they can go on and get those STEM careers and degrees for their future for our economy as well as their own. Um, so we have a number of opportunities. We do one-time volunteer opportunities. We host over a dozen events throughout the school year to help introduce students to STEM and get them interested. We do uh, ongoing mentorship programs, so uh, encouraging those students to go on to those STEM careers by introducing them to STEM individuals to help increase their knowledge about what STEM careers are. And as well as we uh, operate something called the STEM shop. So that is a resource area for STEM educators. So teachers need resources to um, use in their classroom. So organizations will donate things, everything from old ticker tape calculators that they no longer use to letterhead that they no longer use um, to us, and we distribute that to STEM educators in our region. So if you're interested in any of those, come talk to me. We'd be happy to partner with you. Hi, I'm Don Mallory with uh, Full Sun Composting. Um, Michael, thanks for talking about composting. That's great. <laughs> and I've got a new joke, so I would say, uh, uh, any of, the, any of the partners that are here uh, would be great resolutions. Uh, fr from our perspective, uh, we, I go to the library all the time, I go to the Met, we love biking, we use the public transportation. I mean, it, it, all of these people in this room are amazing. Do anything, just do something. <laughs> so, have a good year. I am Casey Graves, I'm the planning coordinator at Tulsa Transit, and I don't usually speak <laughs> um, my boss is ill this morning. So um, in 2018, whether you ride the bus or not, I encourage you to at least be a transit advocate and just to learn and understand how even if you don't ride transit, it can benefit your community and the economical growth of your city just by supporting and being an advocate for transit. Um, we do also have the TPS rides program that we just recently started that a lot of people aren't aware of. Any Tulsa Public School high school student aged ninth through 12th grade can ride for free, seven days a week, even our nightline system. So trying to encourage in the youth and get them using public transit so maybe as they move into adulthood, they'll be more comfortable riding transit as an option and not necessarily just because it's the only means that they have. So, ride the bus. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm with the uh, Community Food Bank of Eastern Oklahoma, and as everybody's thinking about resolutions for better health for themselves, you can also uh, help create better health for other people who are struggling financially and putting enough food on the table. Um, a box of food at the end of the month is not gonna help a family through a financial crisis, but it will keep them fed as they're working through that crisis. So the food bank has a million ways to get involved. You can be inside. If you like to be outside, there's outside projects. Gardening, we've got new grow tainers that is growing lettuce inside. Uh, farmers markets for uh, low-income families who are at early learning centers, office work. Any skill set that you have, anything that you want to do, we probably have a match for you at the food bank, so please feel free to get in contact with us, okfoodbank.org. Hi, I'm Julie Skye with All Souls Green Team. Most of you probably know about All Souls, the Green Team, and the pretty much down and dirty work that we do, whether it's, um, it seems like, Anybody who's making trouble in Tulsa turns up at All Souls. And if you want to be with people who kind of help you make trouble, then whether it's Helmark Park, whether it's interfacing with Smart Growth Tulsa. So uh, we meet the second Wednesday of every month. You don't have to be a Unitarian. You can show up and find out what we're doing to connect the dots around um, Sierra Club, around League of Women Voters. But what we're having on Tuesday, January 9th, is it's time to fix the Tulsa levees. Does everybody here know that Tulsa levees is a really big topic? And it's estimated to be the environmental um, catastrophe of our time. If we had a 500-year flood that flooded Holly Frontier, we would have 
an oil catastrophe that went down to the Mississippi and New Orleans, and most people are looking at the gathering place but not looking at what a flood would do to the gathering place. So this is really big, and it's really huge. And it's not that much money to fix it, but it's going to take time and years to do so. So um, the speakers are Bob Jackman. You've seen his face on the news, uh, Charles Pratt, um, Karen Keith's deputy, John Fothergill. And they're going to talk about the levees. And they're going to talk about the fact that it's will that really is what's going to take to make this happen. So Emerson Hall, 7 o'clock, All Souls. And I've got flyers here if you want to take them and spread them around. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Taylor, Up With Trees. Thank you, Michael, for the great shout out. Um, we have planted over 40,000 trees for Tulsa, schools, parks, highways. You see the wooden signs along the highway. Um, and we are right in the middle of our planting season. We're going to, between now and March, we're planting 600 more trees along the Osage Trail. So there's plenty of opportunity to get that resolution in to plant something this year. Um, we also focus a lot on education. Again, if you're wanting to learn something new, we just opened registration for our Citizen Forester program. It's all four Saturdays in February. You learn how to do uh, tree ID, how to plant a tree, how to prune a tree, how to promote the urban forest. You get a cool hat, a cool t-shirt, um, and we'd love to have you. So um, we've got um, information here. You can sign up for our monthly volunteer email. Uh, we'd love to have you. Good afternoon, Carrie Rowland with Public Service Company of Oklahoma. If you are a PSO customer, I hope you resolve to be more energy efficient. And the good news is we have ways to help our customers do that. An easy way for your home is to sign up for the Power Hours program and you will receive a free, yes I said free, Wi-Fi thermostat. So be sure to check out our website on that. We have programs for businesses, small businesses as well, to make you more energy efficient. If you're interested in clean energy, we have a program where you can sign up to purchase WIND credits on your bill called WIND Choice. I have some information here about that. So thank you. Uh, hi, uh, Mike Lemus. I'm with Tulsa Community College and my colleague Cindy Barton who um, has coordinated what I'm about to tell you about, was not able to stay for the whole event. Uh, I know very little about this I Can't series, but I'm going to speak about it anyway. <laughs> uh, it's a free and open to the public set of workshops uh, con conducted every Monday in this room. I know that the C4C staff did a great job assembling some local experts who can help you uh, uh, it runs by the tagline, think you can't do something, think again. So they've assembled um, a number of, of uh, experts in a variety of areas. I'm not going to read all of these, but just to give you a sense of what the I Can't series topics will be this spring, winter and spring. Um, I can't sculpt. I can't turn wood. I can't drum. I can't sing. I can't emboss glass, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's a flyer here for your perusal. And it's, you can also get more information by going to tulsacc.edu forward slash Center for Creativity. Thank you for your time. Have a wonderful rest of your day. OK, so if you can stick around, definitely visit with the booth goers here. And our last uh, moment here is Michael was generous to bring a book, The Field Guide to Oklahoma Plants. And so my newly acquainted person that I introduced myself to is Lori, and she's going to pick the winner here. Thank you. It's Jessica Withington. All right, come on down. Have a great new year. Come and join us again next month. Thank you so much. All right. so Thank you. Didn't you win last time or something? Oh, I thought you won last time. All right. You won the garden, right?